Hi everyone, welcome back to Intermediate Ukulele with me Matt Stead. Today we're going to look at triplets. It's such a fun way to spice up your strumming and add a bit of interest to your playing. It's one of my favourite things to do on ukulele. We're going to look at what triplets are. We're going to look at the three main uses for triplets. I'm going to show you how to do them in a lot of detail and we'll look at a few options of those. And then last of all, we're going to put it into practice. So what actually is a triplet? So a triplet at its essence is where we put three strokes in the space of where we would normally play one or two beats in a piece of music. So for instance, if I was just doing a strum and I was counting to four, one, two, three, four, I've got four up and down strokes. One, two, three, four. So if I was doing triplets in the space of each of one of those beats, I would have four lots of three instead. Triplet, 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 triplet. One, two, three, four. We could think of it as one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. That's a neat way of counting it. But it's basically a way of squeezing more strokes than you would expect in a very short period of time. So if you were looking at a piece of sheet music and you saw three groups of notes close together with a bracket or a line on top and a number three, a little number three, you'll see an example up on the screen now. That would mean where the number three is, we're going to play a triplet. So in the example here, we would normally, if I was not to do a triplet, we would have that A note at the start. Don't worry if you can't read sheet music, but just know it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But notice that second chord is turned into a triplet. So now we have one triplet, three, four. One, two and a three, four. And that's how, how they're shown in sheet music. So triplets are used in three main ways by ukulele players. The first is in a continuous strum to provide a really fluid, continuous backing um, accompaniment to a voice or a melody. So like this, for instance. Notice just constant triplet, 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 triplet. Used in a lot of Hawaiian music. We're going to have a go at this in a little while. Don't worry, I'm going to slow it down for you. So constant triplets, one after another. Another way they use is to provide a bit of excitement or punctuation in a standard strum. Um, now, this is something that George Formby and Roy Smeck used to do a lot of, um, where they would do something called a drop thumb triplet, where you just have a single triplet in the middle of a normal strum. See if you can spot it in this change from C to G7 and back again. quite subtle wasn't it did you just notice the reason it's called a drop thumb triplet and we'll go into more detail in a minute is that all you see is my thumb moving because the rest looks the same if I slow it down watch for the thumb there it is and that's a really nice way of adding it to your playing to add a nice little spice in little sections of music and finally, more formally, when it comes to um, arranging music, they're used in a lot of classical pieces and traditional pieces that have been arranged for ukulele. Uh, the great um, late um, John King used to use them in a lot of his arrangements. Here's a piece called Kamakani Kaili Aloha that I arranged for ukulele a few years ago. And I wanted to add some real punctuation and feel to the start of this piece. See if you can listen out for the triplets. <laughs> Notice that little bit of drama that it presents, where normally we would have just had. And that's a more formal way of using triplets in classical and arranged music. And people really, really overcomplicate this thing. And, you know, um, hopefully, you know, by now um, I'm all about uncomplicating things. I want 
um, learning ukulele to be as easy as possible. I don't like it when people get all snobby about it and try and make it difficult for people. So <laughs> basically the triplet is just a down up strum with an added thumb. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look at one triplet. I'll go into the actual physics of it in a moment. But a triplet strum, we're going up and down just as you would normally. Notice my wrist and my arm are moving down and back up. It's only the f fact that my thumb is involved that produces that triplet. So it's a down up strum with a cheeky little down thumb in the middle. I'll show you how to do it. So let's have a look at our hand position, um, our strumming hand to make it comfortable for doing these triplets first. What I want you to do is put your hand in this position. It's kind of like we're hitching a lift with this thumb, but the index finger is pointing out in an almost gun shape. We're not going classic James Bond with two fingers, just the one like this. So next thing what I want you to do is just relax that index finger. When we're holding it straight like this, notice that it actually takes a little bit of muscle work. If you kind of just relax all your tendons, do you see what happens when I relax? My finger just kind of curves back on itself. And that's what we want. We want this shape, but we want this index finger to curl back. So it's pointing out just a little bit further than these three fingers, which are curled back into my palm. Okay, so this would be tense. Just relax it. This is the shape that I want you to keep throughout this triplet practice. Okay, straight and relaxed. There we go. That's what we want. Notice that the thumb isn't dead up here. It's just in its relaxed position, which for most people is at a slight angle. Now, the position of this thumb is really, really crucial to all of this. And this is a classic beginner's mistake. What we don't want is for your thumb to be completely flat with the strings, because if you strum down, can you notice, it's kind of hard to touch the strings. It almost wants to fly past, doesn't it, down here? But if we're moving that thumb in towards the, the ukulele, if I do this angle, can you see how the thumb is kind of coming in towards the uke? And there's a rotation of my wrist that pushes that thumb into the strings quite naturally in one movement. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now, another point of fact to notice is that with the thumb part of the strum, it doesn't need to strum all four strings. It just needs to lightly brush against a couple of the strings. When I do it, it only really brushes very lightly against the top two or three strings physically, the G, C and E because otherwise it, it produces too much sound and it's a bit too much of a drag when you're trying to do it quickly. So practice one, two, one, two, one continuous movement. Notice my arm is moving, but also a rotation of the wrist. Okay. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. One last point, and again, these things are really, really important. When you finish this strum, try not to move your hand too low. If I come right down here, then the next strum where I need to finish off, I've got one heck of a movement to bring it all the way back up here. So finger goes down, thumb goes down, and then we're ready for an up strum. Let's do it. So to add the three of the triplet, or if you think of the triplet as a three syllable word, I know it's not, but let's think of it as one. tri pull, let We've got the tri pull. now we need the let. Or we've got the one, two, and we need our three. And the three part, or the let's part of the triplet, is the easiest part of all, because all we need to do is move the index finger back up again just like you would in a perfectly normal strum. You know how in a normal strum you strum down with the nail and you come up with the pad? Well, that's what we're doing here. And the only difference between a down up strum and a triplet strum is this thumbs involved. So the final part is just to move that index finger up over the strings. So in slow motion, I have tri one, two, Three. One, two, three. Finger 
thumb, finger. Finger, thumb, finger. Notice that the thumb stroke is very light and the up strum is very light as well. Okay, just practice that round a few times. Maybe even pause the video and just practice that down, down, up. Finger, thumb, finger, triple X. Believe it or not, that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Now remember, if you can play something slowly, you can play it quickly. You just need to practice, practice, practice. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna practice this lots. So first of all, as I say, pause the video, get that motion down correctly and comfortably. And then let's move on to adding them one after another. So we're gonna do consecutive triplets. I'm still playing all open strings. I'm not playing any chord at the moment. And instead of just doing a triplet, and stopping, this time I want you to see if you can do triplet after triplet. I want you to start really slow like this. And you can count in your head. Triple let, triple let, triple let, or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Keep that rotation of the wrist. Keep that thumb away from the index finger, nice and light, and see if you can keep that going. <laughs> now, before we put that into a lot more practice, actually, in a piece of music, let's look at a couple of extras that we can do to make it sound even nicer. Here's something that a lot of Hawaiian players um, do that I've noticed, and something which I do quite naturally as well. It just feels most comfortable to me. And that's on the tri, or the one of the triplet, rather than coming down with just my index finger, I actually allow all four of my nails to spread out over the strings. That produced this really silky, kind of almost like a trill sound. Rather than this, I have that, and it's just letting all the fingers fall down the nails. Notice I'm roughly starting with my little finger. I'm not really thinking about it in a particular order of fingers, but my little finger, because it comes down diagonally, is touching the strings first and then the other four. And I kind of think of this almost like an opening up of the hand. See, I open up as I go. Then I follow down with my thumb. Open up and thumb. Open up and thumb open up and thumb and then of course we finish you you don't need to use all four fingers on the way up just finish with that up strum of the index so it looks something like this open thumb up open thumb up open thumb up open thumb up triple it triple it triple it notice it gives it a bit more texture Notice how it just looks like my hand is opening up on the way down, then my thumb, and then my index comes up. So open, thumb, index, open, thumb, index. And just as before, keeping this thumb up and out the way after you do that first one is crucial because if it goes down, then you've got to come back up before another movement. So thumb stays up. Can you see that? Give that a try. Pause the video and try it round a few times. And finally, think of this one as a bonus. Don't try it if you're not confident on the triplet yet. But if you've been doing triplets for a little while and you've been practicing and you want to put it in, here's something called that Roy Smek, one of my favourite ukulele players used to do. If you haven't checked out Roy Smek's stuff, um, look him up on YouTube, Roy Smek, um, S-M-E-C-K. He was an amazing ukulele player, um, I think mostly in the 40s and 50s, I hope I've got that right, um, and used to play a lot of kind of ragtime style stuff in his own very fast, kind of very flamboyant style of playing. And when he did triplets, he used to come down on the triplet and the thumb here, where the body meets the neck, but the up, he used to bring his arm back and come up the other side of the sound hole, so between the bridge and the sound hole. So it gives this circular motion. Can you see that? I go down, down, up over here. Down, down, up, down, down, up. Now, why would you do that? 
partly because it looks really cool when you go fast like this. It's like a like you've got this amazing circle, right, going on. But also, it can help you keep time. If you're doing those constant triplets, one, two, three, one, two, three. If you've got this circle, the natural time it takes you to get back from here to here and then back to here keeps you in time. But if you're not sure, just stick with it here for now. That's absolutely fine. But a little bit of a flamboyant edge if you want to put a little bit of fancy pants drumming into your triplets. So let's put that into practice. Remember, if you haven't quite got that triplet down yet, pause the video and keep practicing. You can always do this over days or weeks even to get this right and come back to the video at any point. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the traditional Hawaiian song, um, Aloha Oi, which was written by Queen Liliu Kalani. Uh, this was written um, in Hawaii when she was under house arrest. So a lot of people think of it as a traditional love song, but really it was kind of a, a farewell to the old way in the islands. And it's kind of a protest song, really. So it's a lot of really interesting history behind this song. Um, it's a very simple song in terms of the chords. We have C, G, D7 and G. We're just going to keep rotating that round and round. You don't really need to worry about this next bit, but if you are interested, the structure of this song is in 2-4 timing or cut time. That means there's two beats in every measure and each chord is for two measures. Again, don't worry about what that means. It just means we're going to count to two triplets twice. One, two, one, two. So we've got four triplets. One, two, three, four. But just to bring it down into the correct timing for the song, we're going to count it as one, two, one, two. Let's try that. Let's hold down a C chord. And after two, I want you to count two lots of triplets. One, Two, here we go. One, two, one, two. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. And that counting of triple it in your head, or one, two, three, whichever you prefer, is going to really help your timing. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Fantastic. Now, after we've played two lots of two on a C chord, we're going to do exactly the same on a G major chord. We're going to count two lots of two. One, two, one, two. Now, when you're doing triplets, the chord changes, it's difficult to get them really smooth. It's kind of like, have you ever done that thing where you've got to pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time. It's really hard because your hands want to do the same thing. They don't like to act independently. And because we're concentrating so much with this right hand, a lot of people find the left hand is really difficult to change between chords. Now, as with all my videos that I've mentioned in the past, I want you to really go easy on yourself. It's more important to get this constant triplet action here with the right hand down correctly than it is to get these smooth chord changes. So if it's a little bit like this, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it takes me a little while to get that G down. That's totally cool. Just keep that right hand going no matter what. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple. It. Let's practice that change then. C to G, two lots of two. You'll soon get the idea when we've done it round. One, two, here we go. One, two, one, two, now G. One, two, one, two. Let's try C. One, two, one, two, and G. One, two, one, Two. Notice my second finger can stay where it is when I go to the C. A really neat trick for changing between G and C. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. One, two, one, two. Fantastic. 
After that, we have a, a D, and because we're playing a Hawaiian song, let's try what we call the Hawaiian style D7, which is the easiest D7, and that's just our fingers in this position, 2020 zero, zero from nose to toes, core box on the screen. So we'll do that for two. Two lots of two, remembering. One, two, one, two. And then we'll go back to G to finish off two lots of two again. Two, one, two. So we'll put that whole thing together, strum along with me, two lots of two on each chord, C, G, D7, G. Let's keep it going round. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Aloha, aloha, iki hona hona no ho ikali. Spice it up even further. We're going to add a couple of extra little chord changes in there. After the first round of C, G, D7, G, we're going to stick a cheeky little G7 in. And after the second round, we're going to stick a cheeky C and G in at the end. Um, have a watch through of me playing it once so that you can understand and get the chord structure. And then just rewind back and have a go yourself. You'll soon get the idea. Chords will be on the screen. This is just going to add a little touch um, of something extra to the piece. The G7 adds a little bit of tension, which makes you want to go back to the C. And that's the main reason of the G7 chord in the key of C. Adds tension, makes you want to go back home. Let's give it a go. One, two, C. Sorry to my Hawaiian friends if I sung that completely horribly wrong, but I wanted to give it a go. Now this next bit, 
Don't even entertain this if you're just starting out in triplets, but if you want to come back to this video when you're more confident or if you've been playing them a while and you'd like a little challenge. Something cool that you can do with this piece of music is to almost turn it into a quick 4-4 four, four timing. Don't worry about what that means for now, just know that we could play those triplets twice as fast. So instead of... We're going to play one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Triple it, 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 triple it. Woof! Really tricky, right? So we're basically going to count a quick four and we're going to do a triplet on each one. Two lots of four on every chord. Have a little try if you're feeling confident and have a little play along. If not, just hear how it can sound as we speed things up. It adds a little bit more thickness to the strumming and a little bit more interest. I'll just play it through once to give you the idea and then you can practice at home if you enjoy that. One, two, three. Hello. Okay, not full of faint hearted at all, but that's something you can aspire to if you're just starting out, or that's something you can try if you've been playing a little while, doubling up, so we play four of those in each measure, really nice. Now finally, let's have a look at that Roy Smack or kind of George Formby way of dropping these triplets in. And I referred to this before as a dropped thumb triplet. And quite simply, what we do is we drop a triplet in the middle of a normal strum. And the reason, remember, it's called a drop thumb triplet is that the only thing you see move is this thumb. See that thumb move there? Now this is a lot more simple than it looks as well. Quite simply, we'll be strumming up and down. Let's slow motion it. One and two and three and four and. And one of those strums will turn into a triplet. Let's try the third one. One and two and triple it down. One and two and triple it down. So in effect, what I'm doing is I'm just doing a normal up and down strum, but this thumb is coming down to produce a triplet on the third measure. Let's slow that down even more. One and two and triple it four one and two and three and a four that's your timing one and two and triple it four one and two and triple it four one and two and triple it four if i just keep that going Notice the only thing you see different in the strum is that on that three where we do the triplet, that thumb comes down. And you can place that anywhere in a song. Something Formby used to do it quite often on was when he would play a G7. Go into a C, he might do C, two, three, four, one, triple it, C. Have a try at placing that in the middle of your normal strum. I could do it on any of the beats. I could do it on two. One, triple it, three, four. I could do it on one. Triple it, two, three, four. Or I could do it on four. One, two, three, triple it. And all it is, that thumb coming down in the middle of your normal strum. Takes a lot of practice, thinking about all those things I taught you, with keeping the thumb light, making sure it's up here, not coming down. 
and practicing it round and round. You'll get it, it takes time, but it sounds super cool when you get it. So practice putting that anywhere in a song. Remember, keep the tempo really, really low whilst you practice it. When you've got it up to tempo, you can put it anywhere and it sounds really cool. So if I'm just playing a basic kind of ragtime chord progression. <laughs> Did you see those little drop thumb triplets? Just adds that lovely little bit of interest. So in conclusion, we've got a couple of different ways we can play them continuously or every now and then as a drop thumb triplet just to add a bit of interest at any particular point in a song. Couple of tips, remember, keep that thumb up. You're hitching a lift, but it's not tense, it's relaxed. That index finger wants to be out, but again, quite relaxed, so it's bending back on itself. Always keep that thumb up above the G string and make it one continuous movement. We don't want one, two, three. We want one continuous movement. Almost like my hand is moving in towards the ukulele like a windmill. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And take it incredibly slowly. This can take a long time to perfect. It's really tricky what we're doing with timing. Remember what I said about patting your head and rubbing your tummy. Be patient with yourself. Take your time, pause the video loads, come back to it. And most of all, try and have fun with it because it's really cool once you get it.